Good to see everybody out tonight. We appreciate you being out on a Wednesday night, prop night, Wednesday before Christmas, five days until Christmas. And, uh, man, I hope you're ready. If you're not ready by now, you're in trouble. So uh, you don't have very many days to get ready. But we appreciate you being out tonight. So good to see Anthony with us tonight, buddy. Appreciate you being here tonight. God bless you. And Miss Maria, good to see you. God bless you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate that. And everybody else that's out tonight and those that are online, I hope you're having a Merry Christmas. I don't know. They tell me that Martha's loose running all over the place. I don't know if you got Martha on you or not, but uh, she's trying to attach herself to me, but I'm trying to get rid of it. But uh, trying to have a Merry Christmas. Amen? So we're going to get started up. Miss Jean, let's stand and sing a Christmas carol tonight, and uh, we'll get ready to go here just in a minute. Let's all stand. Okay. We got can music. <laughs>
Thank you, Miss Jean. How many people knows more than one line to a Christmas carol? I only know like the first line, you know. And once you get once you get past that, I'm I'm pert, pert and I ruined on that. But thank you, Miss Miss Ruth. Miss Ruth. Miss Jean. I you know, it sounded like Miss Ruth was playing the piano. I turned around and looked behind me there to see if that was Miss Ruth right there. Well, don't forget now, uh, Christmas uh, Eve services will be 1030 Sunday morning, and then don't forget Christmas communion will be Sunday night, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, you're out for that, for the communion, if possible, and, and man, what a great way to bring Christmas in, amen? And then don't forget a revival with Randy and Mary Perry being January. Got a nice Christmas card from them. Well, that's a beautiful card, and by the way, he got another good uh, report yesterday, and, uh, man, we just thank God for that. That's, what is that, three in a row that he's had? And we thank God for that. So God bless him. Keith and Wanda celebrated their anniversary on the 18th. And she told me that neither one of them forgot. So that's a blessing. And then Ruth and Bennett, they're celebrating tomorrow. And Ruth's in the hospital. I don't know if you heard me talking about that. But uh, she's in the hospital. And uh, all I know so far is that she's got shortness of breath and severe uh, uh, sore throat. So pray for Ruth and Bennett tonight that God will bless them and help them. And then birthdays, Ray Broderick's is in two days. Don't, don't, that's your daddy. Don't forget that. So uh, don't forget Ray. And then Kai's birthday is Saturday the 23rd. That's Christy's, Christy's son, right, Kai? And so his birthday is the 23rd. And then prayer request tonight, Shirley Marr had her surgery on uh, today, and I got talked to her just a while ago. She was a little bit groggy and been asleep, but uh, she said she was about a 7 out of, a, out of 10 on, on pain uh, level, so pray for her and Bill. Uh, Kathy's been trying to take her getting meals over there, and we're just going to turn it back over to uh, Shirley, and if you, if you can help, call Shirley and make sure that somebody else is not coming, and uh, Kathy's done about all she can do with that. And so we're going to turn it back over to Shirley. So just contact her if you want to help out. And uh, then she can tell you whether she needs food or not. But I appreciate Kathy's worked hard for two weeks on that. And I appreciate all that she's done for that. Uh, pray for Miss Ruth, as I said, is in the hospital. And Bennett, Billy Brown's sister, Pat, is in the hospital in Haines City. Huh? Sister in law, I'm sorry, sister in law is in the hospital in Haines City with COVID and COPD. So remember her. And then Becky Starcher, a lady from uh, Calhoun, West Virginia, just put on that she uh, really needed prayers and pray for Becky and her family. And then uh, Sherry Snyder put on there that she needed prayers. And then Andrew, that's Glenna's. Uh, grandson was taking his treatment uh, this week to see if it was going to work and uh, we just pray that that treatment will work if not they're going to have to do surgery on him and then becky Nagy's in the hospital uh, in west virginia with covid and then rachel rachel has the baby come in by here has the baby come roxanne's niece so pray for her uh, major got a good report today and we certainly think was it today or yesterday today uh, pray for him. Uh, Brother Canuck is recuperating, and Dennis Shires is here tonight. I see him out there. He's still suffering with his back. Uh, Chris McNabb is still having back problems and breathing problems, and Travis Butts is Christie's brother who has cancer and 30 years old. I'm going to go ahead and pray tonight and get us started. i got a couple things I want to do tonight, so let's pray tonight. Can we do, Lord? We're so thankful that we're able to be out on Wednesday night. Here we are on the 20th of December, five days before Christmas. And Lord, we just pray that you help us tonight to get our minds and thoughts on you, that we'll be able to do uh, and be the kind of Christians you'd want us to be. And Lord, we ask you tonight to help us uh, as we study your word, that it, it'll be a blessing to us, Lord, that it'll go out and uh, lodge in the hearts of your people. If somebody that's online or here tonight may not be saved, may not be where they ought to be, I pray that they will realize, Lord, that uh, Christmas is about redemption and about Jesus coming to save us from our sins and dying on the cross. And Lord, I pray tonight that you bless all the requests tonight, all the names that have been called off, all those on uh, our prayer list, and Lord, Miss Ruth in the hospital, and and uh, and Billy, uh, uh, sister-in-law, and Shirley that just had surgery today. Help them, and Lord, all these other folks tonight, I pray. And Lord, give us a good service, and we'll thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, I'm going to be going to the book of Luke, chapter number 2 here directly, not right now, but directly. And uh, so I wanted to make a couple comments tonight before we got started. 
I'm so proud of a couple of our young Christians that, uh, that God has, has blessed. I saw the other day not long ago that, uh, you know, we're talking about, we've been talking about three weeks of sharing our faith and how important it is to share our faith. And uh, I'm so proud of a couple of these guys and their families and what they're doing. Am I on back there? Good. I don't want you to see that. But uh, one is Brian. And there, I don't know if you can see that, but Brian had his ad on Facebook uh, for, for Christmas. And here's a young Chris, Christian, he and Mary, and got on there about Jesus is, is the reason Christ without Christmas. You can't have, can't have Christmas without Christ. He's the reason. I like that. Amen. I like that. Thank you, Brian. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. God bless you. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, it, I said yesterday uh, in talking about sharing our faith, that that's why everybody needs to share their faith. Amen. There are people that would shy away from me and not want me around them that I couldn't reach in a million years and that you might be able to reach, that, that, that then there are people that you could reach that I might not be able to reach. So I thank Brian and, and Mary for putting that out there. In this day and age, I, you know, that, that I, I like that. And then Dustin and, and Shana, I'm going to try and play this. I talked about Ju Justin yesterday, and uh, let me get that off of there. You don't want to see that. Can you see him? And uh, by the way, you need to give me some tips on that on how you're doing that. So if you turn that mic up, I want you to listen to what, what he says here. And this is Justin, and I, I don't know where you came up with the idea, but, man, I like it. And, uh, man, I think the video will speak for itself. So just a couple seconds. Let me see if I can get that going. Naturally. Wait a minute. No sound. Uh, I wasn't on mute a minute ago. Wonder why, wonder why if I kicked it off, I went back to mute. Well, I'm going to say that uh, mute. Look at that right now. That's output. Well, he looks good anyhow, doesn't he? That's muted. Oh man. Honey, I don't have any sound at all. That this, there's no sound at all. It's not coming out of the computer. I tried before I left the house, and from the house to here, it's quit. Well, Dad gone it. He looks good, doesn't he? Amen. But anyhow, he's, he, he, um, Shane and, and Justin have a business. He, do, he makes knives, by the way. does a great job. Very artistic, but... Uh, I don't know how you got onto this, but man, I appreciate it. If you, if you haven't seen it, go on Facebook and look at it and listen to it. Brian had on his page. I got on my page. Uh, First Lady's got on her page. You got on your page. So Major's got on his page. But anyhow, he's talking, he's talking about somebody. Had somebody asked you for a Bible? Is that what it is? Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. I mean, I, 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 what a innovative, innovative. Everybody's got their own thing they can do to share the gospel. Amen. I just hate like the Dickens at that. I'm sorry, buddy. I apologize. I hope you won't hold that against me. I'm going to blame the computer. Do what? You got seven more to send out? Do you need s some more Bibles? No, I, I ordered some. Uh, well, well ma'am, we can supply you with the Bibles. Amen. Amen. So let me, let me see if I can exit off of that now. How can I exit that? Lorena, help me. <laughs> help me. I said, you, I said we could get off of that. I want to quit mirroring. Did it quit? Turn it off and turn it back on. How's that? Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm about to panic. 
I'm about to panic. We good? We good? Well, well, it's still mirroring. Let's shut it down. Yeah. Yeah, just a little, don't pull it back up. But uh, anyhow, let me say again I, how much I, I appreciate Brian and, and Mary doing that and, and Shana and Justin doing that. I just think that I just think that's fantastic, don't you? Yeah. And my, 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 I tell you what, it, it, uh, it warms my heart. I can tell you that's a blessing to me. I tell you what, I, tell you, I want you to know, you guys, are young Christians, you're a blessing to me. I want you to know that you're a blessing. You're a blessing to me. Amen. So we're not sc screening now, are we? No. We good? Okay, good. All right, all right. Let me see where we I'm trying to find my, my lesson now. I, boy, I've got everything all mixed up here. And uh, I thought that was it right there, but that's it. There we go. Praise the Lord. Technology is great when it works and when it doesn't, so be it. Got your Bible tonight. Open up the book of Luke, chapter number 2. I'm going to talk about a story that I absolutely love to talk about. And let me put this mic back up. I won't need two since it didn't work. Shame on you. But anyhow, I want to talk about the shepherds and the birth of Jesus. So hopefully it'll be an informative lesson to you. Uh, might give you some info that maybe you've never heard, maybe you've heard a few times, maybe you haven't. But anyhow, let's just jump into it. You ready? Yeah. Luke chapter number 2. If you can pull up on the big screen, I'd appreciate that. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 1. You know the story. Luke chapter 2, verse number 1. It came to pass in those days, and I'm going to make a few comments as we go, and then I'll teach the lesson here in a little bit. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. I'm going down to almost verse 3 now. Verse number 4. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse number 8, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Boy, that, there's a message for Christmas. Right. Uh, when the angel appeared to people, he told them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse number 12, pay attention to that. And this shall be a sign unto you. He told, he told the shepherds, the angel told the shepherd, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Let me ask you a question as we start. Have you ever thought about this? Maybe you've never thought about it. Why God sent the message of Jesus to the shepherds first? I mean, think about that. The message of the, of the birth of Jesus Christ came first to shepherds. First place that went, angels came to the, to the shepherds in the field and told them about Jesus being born. Think about that for just a minute when you think about that. God bypassed the religious leaders of Israel. God bypassed the political leaders of the world. God bypassed the business people that were running businesses. He bypassed all of them and went first and foremost to the shepherds. So I believe we've got some good reasons why. And when I think about that, a couple things I think about. Number one, God loves lambs. Amen. Amen. 
I mean, let me give you a couple things why God loves lambs. Now, you want to have to listen quickly tonight. Uh, Jesus was called the Lamb of God. Amen. John 1, 29, John was baptized, and he saw Jesus come, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Wow, think about that. Which taketh away the sin of the world. 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 18 said, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, which is, such as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without spot, without blemish, and without spot. God slew, God slew an innocent animal when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. When they sinned, they took fig leaves and tried to cover themselves up. That's a type of men trying to save themselves. God laid the foundation principle right there. God come by and said, that's not going to work. And God slew an innocent animal and took the skins of that innocent animal and clothed them. Now, I don't know what that animal was. I just happen to believe it would have been a lamb or a sheep because of all the things that the Bible talks about, sheep in the Bible. Not only that, if you remember in Genesis 22 when Abraham was going to offer up his son Isaac, that the, that the angel spoke to him and said, don't do it. And he looked, turned around, looked, and there was a ram caught in the thicket. A ram is a male lamb over the, year, over the age of one year old. So there's another picture of a lamb or a ram that was caught. Not only that, lambs were sacrificed throughout the whole Old Testament. You had the tabernacle sacrifice, you had the temple sacrifices, and all those, the daily sacrifice required two lambs. Every day, two lambs, in the morning and the evening. And those lambs had to be perfect. They had to be without spot. They had to be without blemish. Remember, if, one, if you would read far enough in the Old Testament, you'd come to, to come to the place where God said, Look, I'm, I'm tired of you, your sacrifices and your offerings. Because they quit offering the best they had. And they started taking the sheep that were lame and were blemished and had spots that couldn't be used for sacrifice, and they wanted to bring them and give them to the Lord. And then not only that, the Passover lamb, that the major so eloquently talked about Sunday night in Exodus chapter number 12 when God was bringing his people out of bondage in Egypt. He said, go out and get a lamb and kill a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost and over the lentils, on the lentils on the doorpost. And when the death angel passes by, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Wow. Every lamb. Think about for the thousands of years of the Old Testament, all the lambs that were slain. All the Passovers from Exodus chapter number 12, everybody had to have a lamb. Every family had to have a lamb. Think about the thousands and thousands and thousands of lambs that were slain in Israel. Those typified Jesus Christ. Every one of those lambs was a picture of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Not only that, Christians are pictured as sheep. Am I right? I mean, if Jesus is the shepherd then the Christians are the sheep. They've got to be sheep if you've got a shepherd. And Isaiah 53, 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Major talked a little bit about sheep the other night. Somebody said, and I don't take offense to this, somebody said sheep are dumb. Sheep are defenseless. Sheep are directionless. And you could come up with a whole lot more things. They don't have fangs. They don't have claws. They don't have venom. They don't have teeth. They have no way to defend themselves. In fact, when you think about it, their only strength is the, is the shepherd. That's, if, if, listen, that's why you have to have a shepherd. Sheep are, sheep are just one. I re, I read, in fact, I read the story today in Turkey a couple years ago that the, 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 guy, the shepherds went to eat lunch. I think it was lunch. And one sheep wandered off and wandered over a hill, and 1,499 followed it. Because sheep are followers. You get one going the wrong, that's why we've got to be careful as Christians who you follow. They're people that lead you astray. Christians are easily led astray. And, you know, we, we are typified as, as the sheep of, of, of the good shepherd, as Christians. Amen. So their strength is the shepherd, and the only other strength they got, they said, when, when an animal comes around to attack, they will bunch up and flock up and get together and just start running around in a circle. They have no defense mechanism. They have no, they're, they're direction deficit, and just dumb as they can be. So think about that. Not saying that about any of you. None of that. Think about this. God loves shepherds. Amen. You believe that? Yes. God is likened unto a shepherd. 
David said in Psalm 20, 23, 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The great king of Israel, King David, was a shepherd. Remember when they came to anoint the king, the next king of Israel, when, so, when, when Samuel came by, he got all, all of Jesse's biggest, best sons, and none of them was the one to be anointed king. And, Je and Samuel said to Jesse, do you have any more? And they said, well, I got one, but he's out there working. He was out there tending the sheep. And the great king of Israel, that's who God chose to be the great king of Israel. Not only that, Jesus is called the good shepherd. In John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus is called the great shepherd. Amen. Hebrews 13, 20, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. He's not only called the good shepherd, he's not only called the great shepherd, he's called the chief shepherd. 1 Peter 5, 14, And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. God appeared to these shepherds first. Here's why I think first. Because they were not common, everyday, run-of-the-mill shepherds. Now, I know, what, I know what tradition says. We've got a manger scene out there on the, on, uh, on, the, on the lawn, and I like it. We've got a manger scene at the house, and I like it. And I like manger scenes, but everything that we read about and everything that we practice and everything that we, that we celebrate the Christmas time with the birth of the Savior is not biblical. And when we think about that, some people say, well, you know, the shepherds were, they were the poor, lowly outcast of Israel. Well, that's true. A regular common shepherd would have been. But these shepherds that the angel appeared to were not just regular common shepherds. In fact, they were priestly shepherds. They were Levitical shepherds. They were shepherds that had been picked out and had been trained under the Mosaic law, under the Levitical priesthood, to be able to go in and spot a lamb, be able to help that lamb be birthed, be able to clean that lamb up, be able to check that lamb to see if there was any spot or blemish on it, and to certify that that was a perfect lamb that was able to be given as a sacrifice in the temple. So when you think about that, it makes sense why the angel first came to the shepherds. Amen. We talk about the shepherds like, well, they're just, it was just happenstance. No, I don't think, I think it was happenstance. The shepherds, these shepherds would have known exactly where Jesus was going to be born. When the angel said, here's going to be the sign. What's the sign? Here's your sign. This is what's going to help you find the baby. You should find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. They would have been the ones that would know. When we, look at, when we look at three men, we can trace Christmas and Christ all the way through them. Number one it would be Jacob. Jacob was the grandson of Abraham. Remember, there's Abraham, Isaac. Boy, we're going to have a history lesson. And Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And then Jacob's wife, Rachel, died at a place called Ephratah. That, that, that's where Micah said Jesus would be born. And Rachel died there giving birth to Jacob's youngest son. And when you think about that, he, you know, he was the 12, had the 12 sons, the 12 patriarchs of, of, uh, of Israel. And man, Jacob... His wife died. They built a memorial there in Ephrata. And man, well, I'm, I'm going to give you some verses on that in a minute. But from him came David, the great king, who came right out of the lineage of Abraham. And you know, the Bible talks about David being the great king. Bethlehem is known as the city of David. And then Jesus, whose earthly lineage ultimately came through Abraham, through David, right on down, through them, his earthly lineage is traced all the way back. So all three men had one thing in common. They all had something to do with Bethlehem. It's no wonder that he was born in Bethlehem. It's no wonder that they appeared to shepherds. It's no wonder that they, the shepherds were the first one to get to message. So we've all heard, as I said, we've all heard the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2. We've read it for years and years and years. It's a tradition, at our a good tradition, by the way. We all read that on Christmas morning, Christmas Eve, sometime through the Christmas season. I've been reading it periodically in the last week or two. I hope you have too. My concern is that we read it so often, really once a year is not often, but we read it so often, we've heard it so much that we just skim by it and we don't really realize what it's saying. So there's some things about Christmas and the Christmas story that are not biblical. They sound good. They make for a good story. They make for a good Hallmark movie. They make for a good manger scene out on the, out on the lawn, 
but they're not biblical. No, and let me give you a couple. Number one, the date of Christmas. Jesus was not born on December the 25th. In fact, most scholars would search it out. It's probably up in, up in the early spring because of the birthing season of the lambs. And that would have been when Jesus, probably the Lamb of God, would have been born. And you go back and take the time where, where, where uh, John, the, John the Baptist's dad, who was Zacharias and Elizabeth, had their child, and search him back all the way back. You can go back beyond that, count up the time, and you realize December 25th is not the date. It's just a date that we celebrate. Three wise men. The Bible doesn't say there were three wise men. The Bible doesn't say that December 25th was, was the birth of Jesus. We talk about the manger like it's a feeding trough. It wasn't a feeding trough. We, we say it was just something out in an old dirty barn. Well, it wasn't out in an old dirty barn. I'm going to show you that tonight. We talk about the shepherds like, like they were, you know, like they were just the lowest of people on the rung of the ladder in Israel. Not these shepherds. These shepherds were priestly shepherds. They were Levitical shepherds. They'd been sanctified. They'd been set apart to be able to have a special duty. In fact, the whole area of Bethlehem was known as the place where lambs were raised and born, were born and raised to be able to present to the temple for your sacrifice. Think about that. What about the innkeeper? We talk about, he, he always makes the Christmas story. The Bible doesn't say anything about an innkeeper. There's nothing in the Bible about an innkeeper. Really when, you talk, when, really, when you talk about the inn in the Bible, there's no room for them in the inn. That wasn't a holiday inn. That wasn't a Motel 6. They didn't have that back then. The Greek word for inn also meant a guest house, a guest room that people had attached to their houses where people would come and stay as they were traveling through. At this time in Bethlehem, everybody that had the lineage of David was coming back to Bethlehem to be taxed, so all of the inns would have been full. But there's nothing about an innkeeper than the birthplace of Jesus. We talk about that. Wow. So let's, let's look at Matthew, Matthew, Micah 5.2. Can you find that? Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2 tells us the place where Jesus would be born. This was a prophecy. Micah 5, 2. There you go. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. Remember what I said the other day? History says that during the time when Jesus was born, probably 100, 200 people lived in Bethlehem. It was just a small little town. It's a place where they raised sheep and temple sheep to be sacrificed at the temple. Yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So that tells us, that gives us the location of where Jesus is going to be born. That's why, think about that, that's why there had to be a tax put on the world. That's why God used a foreign leader, a foreign uh, a leader, the, the Roman emperor, you know, Caesar Augustus, to put the tax on to get Mary and Joseph out of Nazareth back down into Bethlehem so that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem just as the prophecy had said. Now, you would think that the New Testament would be more specific. You say, can you narrow that down? It'd be like saying, well, you know, uh, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cow running loose in Okeechobee. Oke Whereabouts in Okeechobee? Is he on the north end? Is he in the middle? Is he running up down 70? Is he down here on 98 or 78? Or Where is he? What's well, the same way? You'd, th you'd think the Bible would be a little bit more specific in the New Testament. Say, you know, it wasn't just Bethlehem, it was right here. Well, the New Testament doesn't give us the exact location, but the Old Testament does. Now, I want you to look at this first. If you go back to Micah chapter number 4, Micah chapter number 4, you can read this. Verse number 8. Micah chapter number 4, verse number 8. Listen to what this verse says. And thou, thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come. It, it, it come. Even the first dominion, the kingdom, shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. That's telling us that Jesus would be born, that it, the virgin birth, that he would come right there to the tower of the flock in Bethlehem. You say, what's the tower of the flock? Well, the Hebrew word for that means migdal eater, if you remember that, migdal eater, M-I-G-D-A-L-E-D-E-R, migdal eater. And that's what tower of the flock means in Hebrew. And that was the place. So what in the world is a tower of the flock? 
Well, the tower of the flock was it was a place that was on the hills of Bethlehem where shepherds would go and watch their flock and keep an eye on their sheep. It had two stories. It was, it was like a round, could be a round stone building. It could be built under a cave. It could have a, a, another second floor bit onto it. But on the bottom floor, let's go to the top floor. On the top floor was where the shepherds would go and stand and keep a watch and watch for their sheep, especially during the birthing season. And then the, the bottom floor was a place where the sheep, they would bring the sheep in, and that would be the, it'd be the birthing room. It wasn't a dirty, nasty, mangy stable. It wasn't a place with cows and, and donkeys and chickens and everything running around and just, just animal dung everywhere. No, it would have been a place that would have been ceremonially clean. It had been the place for the lamb. The lambs, the perfect, sinless, spotless lambs were going to be born and be raised right there and be taken care of right there at the tower of the flock. You say, why do most people not know where Jesus was born? Well, there's a, there's a reason for that. Like so many things. Tradition has told us so many things about the birth of Jesus that we bypass the Bible. I'm going to use a source that most people don't ever use anymore. The B-I-B-L-E. Most people go back to, and they look at everything else and, and they say, oh, that's what tradition, listen, tradition may be wrong. History may be wrong. You know, the Bible, um, the Bible, <laughs> they say that Jesus was born in the church of the nativity in Bethlehem. You see, they'll see that if you watch anything about Christmas and, and Israel and Jerusalem. They say, well, he was born, and they got the church of the nativity, one of the oldest churches, and they built it over, the, over that place there where they say, this is the place that Jesus was born. And everybody from the fourth century. You say, how do they know? They don't know that. You say, how did that come to be? Because of Emperor Constantine and his mother Helena. His mother Helena got saved or was supposed to have been a Christian, and we can thank them for the erroneous sight that they said, well, this was the place that Jesus would be born. Why didn't they go to the Bible? Why didn't they go to Micah 4.8 and realize he was going to be born at the tower of the flock at Migdal Eater there where the birthing place where the Lamb, Lamb of God, the, 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 the spotless, sinless Lamb of God would be born. Instead, they went to where Helena, Constantine's mother, said this is a place where Jesus was born. They built a big church over top of it. And if you go there today, you can still see that. But I, that's not where Jesus was born. So I want to give you some Bible. I want to give you some Bible tonight. I want to give you some history. And I want to give you some Jewish tradition. And hopefully when I'm finished, you'll have a better understanding of the Christmas story and where Christ was born and why shepherds were the first to hear the announcement. So let me ask you a question. Think about this for just a minute. Do you think that God would have left the birth of his son to chance? God's a God of order. God is a God. Listen, God is a God of specifics. We hear the Christmas story, and we, and we almost get the idea that Mary and Joseph are just wandering around out there through Bethlehem, going from house to house, door to door, screaming and yelling, knocking on the doors, trying to find a place to have the child. Well, there was a place already picked out to have the child. It was tired of the flock. It was McDowell Eater that God had prophesied back there that that's where it would come to. So do you think that God, do you think God was in heaven just watching, looking over the balcony of heaven saying, well, I hope you find it. Now, go, go to this house. No room here. Go to that house. Well, there's no, go, go to that. Oh, I hope you find a place. Do you think that's how it happened? Honestly, if you believe that, you don't know much about God. Amen. God wasn't up in heaven just wringing his hands saying, oh, no, where's Jesus going to be born? He knew exactly word Jesus. Not, not happen chance, not speculation, but exactly. Remember God's sovereign. Amen? Right. Don't you think that God made sure that everything about the birth of Jesus would be just right? I mean, this one-time event, this miraculous birth, this special birth, this holy birth, it was just left to chance. I mean, honestly, we, hear, we see Christmas plays. We, we watch Hallmark movies. We look at Christmas cards, we listen to Christmas carols, and we think, man, they were just roaming around. They didn't know where they were going to be. God had a place already picked out Amen. where Jesus was going to be born. Jesus had to be born to a special person. Amen. That was the Virgin Mary. Would you agree with that? Amen. Jesus had to be born to, in a special place. That would be Bethlehem. Amen. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Jesus had to have a special birth announcement given to special people. That would be the shepherds. Do you agree with that? Jesus had to have special visitors that came to see him. The three wise three. See, I said three wise men. The wise men. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And then when you think about that, then don't you think these wise men that brought, brought 
brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, those special gifts. Don't you think that was all part of the plan? Then why would God leave it to chance where all these other provisions would be, per, would be made for Jesus to be born? Remember, if you believe that Jesus was born, was born in a dirty, mangy stable, in an animal shelter, out there behind somebody's house in a barn, and they said, move over, cow, move over, donkey, move over, horse, we got a baby going to be born here. In the midst of all that dirt and all that nastiness, if you believe that's where Jesus was, was born, man, we got a problem. Because nothing just happens. Amen. Nothing just happens. I mean, think about that for just a little bit. When you think about God put the tax on for Mary and Joseph to, Joseph to end up in Bethlehem. I mean, it was like a 70-mile, 90-mile trip, 6 to 10 days, could have been longer with a pregnant woman. But they happened to end up in, in Bethlehem at the exact time when she was to conceive and bring forth Jesus. What a coincidence. Yeah, what a coincidence. No coincidence at all, amen? Because Micah had prophesied that in Bethlehem it would be the place. And when you think about that, you say, why, why Bethlehem? Because, well, number one, it had been prophesied. If God said it, that will be enough to settle it. Amen. You know, you say, well, it could have been here, it could have been there. Listen, the Bible's correct. The Scriptures are correct. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16. And if the Bible said, if God said, I'll be enough to settle, so that's where it is. Bethlehem was the place. Amen. Amen. So when you think about that, not only that, Bethlehem also means house of bread. Amen. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Jesus was called the bread of life. How, how much better place for Jesus, who was the true bread of life, to be born in the place that was called the house of bread? Jesus said in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Amen? Amen. Not only that, when you think about that, the lambs were raised in Bethlehem were used for the temple sacrifices. Those sheep that were running through the fields of Bethlehem and up on the hills in Bethlehem, those were temple sheep. Those were just not sheep out of somebody's flock and herd out there running around. They were temple sheep that were put there because they had to have those sheep for the sacrifice in the temple. And if you remember, if you remember the Old Testament, you know it enough, it had to be, a, it, before a lamb could be sacrificed at the temple, it had to be a perfect lamb, had to be without spot, had to be without blemish. So did you ever, did you ever even think about where they got the temple lambs from? I mean, two a day. Their months were 30 days long. That's, that's, 60, that's 60 a month. You multiply that 60 times 10 is 600. Add, add uh, uh, some more on that. That's 720 a year. We're talking about perfect, spotless lambs. Not only that, when Passover came, it would have required another thousands more sheep that would have been perfect and without spot and without blemish. Where in the world did they come from? Well, they had a place. It was Bethlehem. That's where temple lambs came from. That's where Jesus was born. Amen? Now you know why these lambs were raised in Bethlehem. When you think about that, man, oh, man, David was a great king of Israel. He was a shepherd. Jesus was promised that he would have the throne of David, and he will. He's coming back. Revelation 19, he's coming back. He's going to sit on the throne of David. Amen. He's in the lineage of David. Jesus, God had promised and prophesied that there will never be a man that failed to sit on that throne forever, and it's Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If you look at Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, it says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, Amen. the son of Abraham. Why? When we read about Ephratah, we can read about that back over with Rachel, as I said, and Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin. Ben, you, know, you know what Rachel said she was going to call her, her son when he died? She was dying when Benjamin was born, and she said, I'm going to call him ben, Benoni, which means the son of my sorrow. Jacob come by and said, no, we're not going to call him the son of your sorrow. We're going to call him Benjamin, which means the son of my right hand. Is Jesus Christ not known as the man of sorrows? Is he not known as the son of the right hand? I mean, the majesty on high, Isaiah 9, 6 talks about that. I mean, my goodness, wow, Jesus Christ was the man of sorrows and also was the man of the right hand of the throne of God. When you think about that, it makes perfect sense for Jesus to be born right where the temple lambs were born and raised. Amen? Wow. Think about that. Let me get in past that for just a minute there. Would it shock you, knowing that about Bethlehem, knowing that about the tower of the flock, knowing that about Migdal Edar, would it be so shocking that years later, 
on a holy night that the angels appeared to the shepherds while they were keeping watch over their flock by night? And it said, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Wow, was it just by chance that Mary and Joseph couldn't find a place to stay? Were they put in a dirty barn and a manger? Were they put out? No, I, I don't think so at all. I think God had a special place picked out, and it was the tower of the flock. Listen, when the, when the angel, think about this. When the angel said, this shall be a sign unto you, he didn't give them any more directions. The Bible says they came with haste and found Mary and, 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 the, and the babe lying in a manger. Just as the angel said, they didn't have to go. Can you imagine going all over Bethlehem, going from door to door, manger to manger, barn to barn, looking, is there a babe out there? Hey, hey, is there a baby out there in your barn? No. These Levitical shepherds would have known exactly where to go when a lamb was born because that's where they took the lambs. The, the, they would watch and bring in the, the female sheep, bring them in, take them into the birthing room, They'd have their little lamb. Guess what they'd do next? They'd clean them up. They would wrap them up in something. Swaddling clothes. You say, why would they do that? So they would, so, so they would thrash you around, kicking and running and falling and tripping over, over everything. They would wrap them up, swaddle them up, place them in a stone manger that had been hewn out and placed them there so that they would not hurt themselves and disqualify themselves from being a perfect lamb for the sacrifice. These Levitical shepherds knew exactly what to look for. They knew exactly how to check. They knew how to make sure and wrap that lamb. And by the way, they say that those swaddling clothes were made out of the high priest old garments. So when the angel said, hey, there's been a baby born, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this is going to be the sign you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. They didn't have to go all over Bethlehem. They didn't have to go from manger to manger and barn to barn and house to house. Look, they knew exactly where the place where they knew where the place would be, where a lamb would be, where a baby would be, that'd be laid in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. And you know where they came? Guess where they came? They came to the tower of the flock, Migdal Eater, just the place where the Bible says, and man, that's the place where they found Jesus. And when they came in and looked at him, and they could certify, these Levitical priests, man, they were trained in the Mosaic law. They could certify this, hey, this, this he, perfect lamb of God. Think about that. Well, how much better could it be than for Jesus, who was a, the, was a, these lambs were a type of the Son of God, the Lamb of God, for Jesus to be born where those temple lambs were born, Amen. in a clean place, in a place that was hewn out of a rock, not a dirt. It would have been ceremonial clean. It would have been, wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been nastiness. Wouldn't have been animal dung. Wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been any of that. You know anything about the Mosaic law, man? Everything had to be just right. Everything had to be just perfect. Everything had to be clean, just like ceremonially clean. And if it wasn't, it couldn't be used. And that birthing room would have been a ceremonial clean place for the Son of God to be born. I submit to you that on that night when Jesus was born. Jesus was not born in a dirty manger. He was not born with animals. He didn't have cows out there lowing and donkeys neighing and, and horses uh, kicking and chickens doing whatever chickens do. And ducks quacking and, and everything and pigs oinking. Uh, you know, that, that, that's not what, you know, you look at the manger and think, all oh, those animals just like the animals. No, 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 no. According to Micah 4.8, it, the virgin-born son of Mary, was going to come to the tower of the flock to Migdal Eater. And when the shepherds heard that message, think about that. They knew more than Herod did, the king. When the wise men came, finally got into town and said, where's he born king of the Jews? Herod said, I have no clue. He said, let me see if I can find out. He didn't even know. When the angel came to the shepherds, he, I'm going to say again, these were not run-of-the-mill common everyday shepherds. They were priestly shepherds that were there watching the flocks that were going to be used for the lambs in the temple sacrifice. And when the angel told them that, they knew exactly what to do. They knew exactly what to what the, They knew the message of the angel. Listen, we removed 2,000 years from that. 2,000 years ago, those shepherds standing on that hillside would have known exactly what that message meant. 
That sometimes we miss things. They say we miss things in translation because we don't keep up with we don't keep up with the biblical truth, and we let tradition come by. People say, "No, Jesus was born here at the church in the Nativity, where Helena Constantine's mother said, well, no, I'd rather go with the Bible. I'd rather take the Word of God. I'd rather use this as a source book, Amen, and say this is where Jesus was born, and the best place he could be born would have been right there in the Tower of the Flock, Amen. So when you think about that, just Wow, let me pull Micah 4, 8 up one more time. And I want you to mark, I want you to mark this verse. And I want you to think about it between now and next year. Good Lord's will, maybe we can talk about it again next year. And thou, O tower of the flock, remember, tower of the flock, the Hebrew for tower of the flock meant Migdal Eder, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. That's talking about the birth of Jesus Christ coming to the Virgin Mary, the daughter of Jerusalem. Does that make sense? So when you think about that, listen, when, when, you, when you sing about the shepherds, when you, when you see the manger scene, I'm not, I'm, you say, what should we do, throw a manger scene out? No, I like them too. I just want you to know the truth of what the Bible says and know where, where Jesus was born, man. He was born in this watchtower, the place where the lambs were born, birthed, cleaned, swaddled, and kept checked and raised that would be presented for the temple sacrifice jesus was the lamb of god amen i mean think about that why the, the lamb of god that, that stone tower that had that tower on top a watch tower where you could look out and watch and see if a, if a sheep was getting ready to have a baby pull it pull it in the birthing room clean it up swaddle it Make sure it didn't kick and thrash and fall up against that stone manger, run into a wall, run into something, and, and, and cut a gash out of it, fall down and break its leg. Because if it did, it would have been, it would have been unclean. It would have, been, it would have, it would have had a blemish or a spot on it. And then they put it in that manger and laid it there, swaddled up. So when they come, can you imagine when the shepherds came that night? And they came right to the place of the tower of the flock, and they looked, and lo and behold, who was there? Mary. And Joseph and a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in that hewn out stone in a manger right there in the tower of the flock. Amen. So I think it makes perfect sense. I think the Bible makes perfect sense. Amen. You say, well, that goes against what I believe. I can't help what you believe. I can't help what tradition says. If, I tell you what I've decided. If tradition's wrong, I'm going to take truth. Amen. I'm not going to go with tradition. I'm going to go with the truth of God's Word. This book, I got a KJV Bible. You want to hey, read it in the KJV? You'll find out. Amen. They've taken, they've taken a lot of things out of the KJV. Amen. I say, if you want, you want the truth of the Christmas story, get your KJV and read it right down your habit. Amen. And these were special shepherds. When you look at these shepherds, when you go out and you see them, see out there in the manger scene, and you look at that, and we think about the shepherds everywhere, don't think they were just dirty, nasty shepherds. They were priestly, Levitical shepherds, amen, that had a job to do to keep the sheep for the temple sacrifices, amen? amen. Well, may God bless you. Let's stand tonight. Miss Jean, get a song. I hope you got something out of it. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, man, I'm, I, didn't, I didn't realize that Jesus was the Lamb of God. I didn't realize that he came to die for me. You, listen, Jesus came to die on the cross of Calvary. It's all about redemption. Christmas is about redemption. It's about coming. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus come to die on the cross of Calvary. And it all started, all started in a place called Migdal Eder, the tower of the flock in Bethlehem where Jesus was born. If you need to come and pray down at the altar, so may God bless you. Miss Jean.
Thank you for being out. If you can be seated for just a minute, Brother Bill's got something he wants to say. But I want to say to you, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, an M-A-R-Y Christmas. And if you do, you have an M-E-R-R-Y Christmas. And I hope you'll come out and be with us during our Christmas Eve services. Can we get offline for just a minute? Cut us off. Let me know when we get offline. <laughs> 